Welcome to another EliteTutoring.ca video. This is Julie Carreri and in this video I will explain to you two methods used to calculate the net worth of a company. Suppose we want to find the value of the company to shareholders, also known as the net worth. This should be similar if not the same as the market capitalization that we could calculate by taking the current share price and multiplying by the number of shares outstanding. We are going to use the common idea in finance that the value of something is equal to the net present value of all of its cash flows. Cash flows to shareholders come in the form of dividends. It doesn't matter that all earnings are not given out in dividends, since that actually means a higher retention ratio, which usually means higher future growth, because theoretically all future earnings would be paid out in dividends at some point, since that is how shareholders get the returns from owning the company. Dividends, growth in earnings, and growth in dividends are going to give us forecasted cash flows for us to discount. We will use the capital asset pricing model to calculate a cost of equity in order to discount these forecasted cash flows to today's date. We will use the capital asset pricing model and cost of equity in order to discount these forecasted cash flows to today's date. We use the capital asset pricing model since we are looking at cash flows only to shareholders. Since we are using dividends per share, we will end up with the present value of one share, so what the market price of shares should be today. And then we will multiply by the number of shares outstanding to get a total shareholder value for the company. Suppose we are told that the company's long-term growth rate is 2%, and over the next five years we forecast a constant growth rate of 4%, and that last year's dividend was 50 cents. If we're not given a growth rate, we could get this by taking the return on equity and multiplying by the retention ratio. This is the percentage of earnings that are kept in the company and not paid out in dividends. We will use a two-stage dividend discount model to get our share price. I have used 5% as our cost of equity just to make the calculation simpler. You would normally have to use the capital asset pricing model and the company's beta and market risk premium in order to get the cost of equity. The value of the stock will equal the present value of the dividends during the extraordinary or growth phase plus the present value of the terminal price of the company. This is the company in the steady state when it's experiencing the long-term growth rate. During our extraordinary phase, we have a 4% growth rate on dividends. This is not a steady state growth rate for the company, meaning it cannot be sustained forever since the company's long-term growth rate in steady state is 2%. That is why we are breaking the value into two parts, the shorter term phase, which is the five years with the 4% growth on our dividends, and the long term steady state when the growth is sustained at 2%. The present value of dividends in the extraordinary phase is the present value of a growing annuity, with the cash flow being the dividend at time one, so 50 cents times 1.04, or 52 cents. The R in our formula is our cost of equity of 5%, and T is 5. The present value of the terminal price is a growing perpetuity with the cash flow being the cash flow at time 6, the year of our steady state, which is calculated by taking our 50 cent dividend from time 0, multiplying by 1.04 to the power of 5 to get the fifth year's dividend, and then grossing it up by 1 plus the long term growth rate, so 1.02, in order to get the dividend in year 6. We also have to make sure that we are discounting that entire growing perpetuity back to time zero. And that's why you'll see a 1.05 to the power of t on the denominator there of that fraction. You can see our substitutions into the formula. We end up with a share price of $22.13. If we're told that the current trading price is $22 and that there are 1.5 million shares outstanding, this would put the company's net worth at $33 million. If we use, however, the price that we have just found of $22.13, we will get a slightly higher value. However, it's almost the same. It's almost exactly $33 million, which means our calculation is probably correct and the market is efficient. The other option for us to calculate the net worth is to get the free cash flows for the company, discount them, sum them together, and get the total firm value. If we're interested in net worth, the value to shareholders, we would subtract out the market value of debt and the market value of preferred equity. Since we are discounting free cash flow, 
which is giving us the cash flows available to be paid out to common shareholders as well as to debt holders and preferred shareholders, unlike our dividend discount model, which was only to the common shareholders, we're going to use the WAC or weighted average cost of capital to discount our cash flows and we will be getting a total firm value. So make sure to subtract off those other market values of debt and preferred if you want to get the net worth and compare it to what you got with the dividend discount model. To get free cash flows, we need to forecast revenues, which is usually done by taking current revenues and growing them by the forecasted growth rate. We don't want to forget any additional revenues coming from new operational lines or divisions that we don't currently have. We may want to keep the revenue separate for different markets or divisions, since they will most likely have different growth rates, and then add them all up to get the total revenues each year. Looking at the history of statement of earnings, we would want to forecast expenses as well usually using the percentage of revenue they represent and multiplying by the forecasted revenues. We would look to see if the percentage they represent has been constant or has been trending upward or downward to forecast our future years, also taking into account any management forecast for these expenses as well. Creating a forecasted statement of earnings for a certain number of years, usually the growth years until the company reaches steady state, or a reasonable number of years that we can forecast, maybe three or five, we can get forecasted net income or earnings for the company. Alternatively, we would forecast net profit margin for the company based on history and management's outlook and the industry and multiply by our forecasted revenues to get forecasted earnings for the company that way. This will save a lot of time and requires less estimations on our part. We take the net income or net earnings, we add depreciation and amortization, we subtract changes in working capital and subtract capital expenditures forecasted to be made on new property, plant, and equipment in order to get our forecasted free cash flow for each year. We then discount the free cash flows using our weighted average cost of capital, doing again the present value of the free cash flows for the first few years we forecasted in our growth phase, and then adding on a terminal value which is based on the next year's free cash flow after that initial phase as a growing perpetuity, growing at the steady state growth rate. To get a steady state growth rate, we would want to take into great con consideration the industry, and if there were a mature company in the industry, we could see what growth rates they are sustaining. In this lesson, I won't be doing a full example of discounting free cash flow, but at least you know the other way of getting the value of the company using the weighted average cost of capital to discount. It's best to use multiple methods to estimating stock value, since all of these have their assumptions and drawbacks. If they are all trending towards the same value, we can be more certain in our estimation of stock value. Thanks for watching the video on valuing the net worth of a company. Email me, julie at elitetutoring.ca, if you would like a custom video created or want to join my mailing list to get updates when elitetutoring.ca will be live with more tutoring and video content. I also have full-length versions of my finance videos that you may find very useful. Check out my other videos on YouTube, username is Julie Carreri, and subscribe to my channel so you can watch any new posted videos right away. Thank you.